Once again, Halloween is upon us. I shall again return to Earth and wreak havoc upon the helpless. <laughs> and you will all cower before me. Well, after my dinner party, that is. So where are you off to all snazzed up? Well, if you must know, I have a premiere party to attend. So do you think this looks okay? Yeah, sure. I'm not overdoing it, am I? I don't want to look too dressed up or anything. No, you look fine, really. Excellent. So while we're on the subject, how's about taking me up with you? I'm freaking sick of this place. Well, I suppose I could, but just stay out of trouble. Fine, but I'm not making any promises. I was told there's a ghost in the building. Time to go flush him out. Brains! 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 That's not a ghost. That's a zombie. I think I'm gonna need a bigger gun. Zombies Ate My Neighbors It was a unique and creepy game released for the Super Nintendo. But if you're looking for a good zombie game to whet your appetite, then keep on looking, because this one deserves to be chucked into the nearest meat grinder. Now the startup screen does have a cool horror movie-like feel to it, and during the game, you'll be killing more brain-eating zombies than you can shake a stick at. Zombies, zombies, and more zombies. And they turn up in the craziest places too. Castles, tunnels, shopping malls, Barnes and Nobles. Brains, brains. Ooh, the Kama Sutra. And that's a good thing too, because do I really want to save this stuck-up cheerleader? I mean, every cheerleader I ever asked out in high school flat-out rejected my ass. Yeah, serves you right, bitch. you also be given a lot of weapons to pick up along the way. Some that are odd, and some that are just plain... Uh... Hmm... Well, that doesn't look right. Now, the first few levels are chuck full of zombies, but after that they start being replaced by other things such as mummies, vampires, Frankensteins, aliens, killer dolls, werewolves, sandworms, giant babies, Count Chocula, and tons of other crap that'll eat your neighbors. But what the hell is up with all these other enemies? The title of this game clearly reads, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Not Monsters Ate My Neighbors. So what the fuck is going on here? In fact, the only thing you won't see in this game are skeletons. And I'm not exactly sure why. So heck, why don't we ask one? So joining us live to the Irate Gamer Show, connected by via satellite, Ronnie the Skeleton. Hello Ronnie, how are you? Am I on? Am I on? Oh goodness me! Well, you sure are. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Oh goodness me, I can't believe it. I'm a big fan, big fan of yours. Well, my name is Ronnie, and you may remember me from my most memorable role as Skeleton Number 2 in the Legend of Zelda game. It was pretty much my breakthrough performance, and most popular to date. And you wouldn't believe the amount of people who would come up to me and say, Hey, gee, Ronnie, I loved you in the Zelda game, but it's really a great thing to see all my people recognize me for my talent. But I've got to say, some of my business opportunities have pretty much dried up. I okay, now for a part in this game, but do you believe I never received a call back from Nintendo? I thought it was a dead luck, but I guess I was mistaken. But my agent even said, Ronnie, you've got this thing in the bag. But I guess I might have been typecast for this part, but you okay, wouldn't now, believe how many few acting roles there are out there for skeletons and video games. And oh my gosh, it's just one of those things that makes you scratch your head. I even was also very close to landing the lead role so, in the game Medieval. But wouldn't you believe my cousin ended up getting that part? I mean, can you believe it? I was in shock that how it got Ronnie, picked over me. Of course I was overjoyed, uh, but Ronnie, obviously I had more experience than him. But then again, Ronnie, I'm not sure if I should feel bitter. Because that's the last uh, thing I would do is become a hypocrite of the entire this is, situation. This is not really but then again, out. I do deserve it. At can least we, that's what my mother tells me. And you won't can believe how many people cut, out there think that the I should have gotten feed. You have to try your best not to get killed, attacked, eaten, maimed, electrocuted. <sighs> what the fuck? Setting up the game this way just really flips my shit. Well, it appears we have a caller. Which is funny because this isn't supposed to be a call-in show. Alright, caller, you're on the air. Oh, uh, yeah, it's Ronnie. Am I on? Oh, uh, Ronnie. Um, 
Yeah, we were experiencing some technical difficulties, but uh, we really don't need you right now. Well, as I was saying, it's really hard for me to get a job uh, working Ronnie? in video games these days for the salary Ronnie? I'm looking for. And you think I'm Jewish? Oh boy, that doesn't compare to the guys working in Sony. I once worked 12 oh straight months for them, and I got Can next to nothing. Can somebody cut the line, please? I mean, I really don't have any grocery bones because I don't really eat cut that the, much, because I do it. have an apartment that- Thank you. So since they did such a shitty job on this game, here's a special irate fuck you to you. God, it's probably Ronnie again. Well, folks, happy Halloween. I gotta go. Yes, yes! The show is mine. Welcome to the evil irate gamer show. Now, the next game we'll be reviewing. Oh, it seems we have a caller. Go ahead, caller. Am I on? Am I on? Oh, goodness me. What is I was saying? I tried to move on to bigger and better things, but there's not really demand for skeletons in parts of video games these days, unless a new Legend of Zelda game comes out. Ah, Tetris, the Soviet mind game. Now, before beginning, you'll be able to select your difficulty level. They even give you the option of picking out your own choice of background music. So, it's pretty much like a jukebox. Hmm, I wonder if they have anything by Van Halen. Bitches! To get the hang of it, you'll be deleting off multiple rows at once to perform a double, a triple, or even a tetris. It's just a good thing this stuff doesn't happen in real life. Aw, oh, fuck! After you've managed to wipe out a certain number of rows, they then give you a small break so they can add up all the points you've collected. During this time, little Russian dancers will then come out and entertain you. Hey, how much are we getting paid an hour? Score really big, and you'll even get the maidens to come out for a bit. Hey baby! Hey, call me sometime! Once the intermission ends, you begin the next level, and now the blocks start descending even faster than before. And the further you advance in this game, the faster they fall. You've just gotta try your best to find a place for each one, and it becomes a never-ending battle to make sure your next move doesn't screw up your whole entire game. And just look at all these blocks! They just keep dropping down on you, and there's no way to stop it! What the hell? Actually mean anything? Will something actually happen if I get all these bars to the top of the screen? I'm not sure, but I think it's time we find out. Can you guess what happens next? I mean, I couldn't believe it. Absolutely fucking nothing! You ass biter! How damn pointless was that? Why the fuck is this even here? I mean, why not post a warning for this kind of shit? Something like warning. These bars are fucking pointless. That's all I ask. Fuck. And it's really annoying because there's nothing worse than having things just dropping down on you. Whoa! Although the Nintendo's Tetris falls a little bit short when compared to the Atari version, it's still addictive as heroin. In fact, I can't get enough of this game. But I have been playing about four hours straight, so maybe I should take a break. Ah, fuck it. I need more Tetris. Give me more Tetris! Bring on the Tetris! First off, we're treated to weird looking shapes not even found in the original. And you see these blocks with black circles on them? Well, those are bombs. Bombs? Afraid so. This Tetris has bombs. Oh shit! But you know what? Even though this game sucks balls, I can't put it down. So why am I still playing this game if I hate it? You know, I think I'm addicted to Tetris. Well, that's it. I'm stopping right now. I'm going crazy! I need my Tetris! Maybe I can help you out. Eggplant wizard? I've got the stuff right here. Gimme, gimme, gimme! <laughs> uh. 
Uh, I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Well, that's it. No more puzzle games. I'm just gonna sit back today and relax. Let's see, maybe I'll play a game I haven't played yet. Now, here's one. Yoshi's Cookie. And the guns? The guns were just awesome. Machine guns, laser guns, spray guns, guns I don't even know the name of. Hell yeah! Take that, you bitches! I guess there could be an explanation in the instruction manual, but the hell with that. Who the hell ever reads those things anyway? I can't waste my time reading about a game, I just gotta play it. Sir, we have a situation. Report. Our contacts have reported that an island out in the Atlantic Ocean is under lockdown and is now being controlled by rogue terrorists. Good God. Wake the president. Of course, the 8-bit translation would look a little bit more like this. I forget it. This is just too painful to watch. Now it's pretty obvious that the military decided to send some troops in to defeat the bad guys. But whose bright idea was it to send in only two men into enemy territory and face a shitstorm of rogue terrorists by themselves? Just who the hell is commanding this operation? Gomer Pyle? Well, golly! Well, except for this one. This laser gun will only travel a few inches from your player if you keep pressing the fire button way too fast. Ugh, what a piece of shit this thing is. If you see it just sitting on the ground, avoid it like the fucking plague. Because if you touch it, you're as good as dead. Now if you decide to play a one player game, then play at your own risk. Because these levels can be somewhat difficult. And that's mainly due to the game giving you only three lives and three continues to work with. Once you're finished, that's it. Game over. And if you decide to continue, they make you restart at the beginning of the level. Well, let's try this one more time. Damn it! This game is just too freaking hard! Well, that's it. I give up. Use the code, Luke. What? The code. Use the code. Oh yeah, the code. Thank you, Wise Sage. You're welcome, Luke. Uh, my name isn't Luke. Oh, really? Oh, this is embarrassing. Well, I gotta go. So what is this code, you ask? Well, amazingly enough, the developers of the game included a code that would give you 30 lives to start out with. And this code is considered infamous by most old school gamers out there. Alright, let's do this. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. Yes! Oops, I should probably switch over to the startup screen first. Ah, here we go. And it also might be a good idea to have a second player helping out. I'll just get one of my friends to play. Hey guys? Hello? Anyone? Maybe I should get some friends first. Maybe I can help. Hey, thanks for coming back. I can really use your help. Let's do this. Alright, let's tag team this bitch. The coolest feature in this game by far is the ability to play two players at the same time. And adding a second player really helps out in clearing out the board of enemies. And you'll also be able to kill off the ending bosses a lot faster as well. Now there is only one drawback of having a second player, and it's on this third level. If one of the players jumps too far ahead of the other, the bottom ledges will disappear beneath you and you'll fall to your doom. Damn it! What the hell, man? Cut it out! Shut your pie hole, slowpoke. What's great about this game is that all the ending bosses are unique and interesting to fight. I just can't wait to see what kind of ending boss is waiting for us at the end of level 3. Ah! 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 Ah!
Okay, now just wait a minute here. There are aliens in this game? What the shit? I thought I was fighting a terrorist war. Now I'm fighting an alien war? Wow, I've been seriously misled. Although if I did take a closer look at the Nintendo game itself, I guess the huge alien in between the two guys is a dead giveaway. Now you might think that a game like this would get boring and repetitive after a while, but each stage introduces new enemies and elements to keep the fun factor at an all-time high. Once you arrive at the final level, you'll find yourself in the alien's hideout. And there, you'll encounter a huge enemy that looks like something out of the movie, Alien. And the similarities between the two are pretty darn close. Hmm, I'm sure it's just a strange coincidence though. But the worst thing about this level is these fucking cotton ball things. They chase you around the level until they kill you. And it doesn't matter if you manage to kill one of them, because there are five more right behind that one. What the hell, man? Just leave me alone! At last you reach the final boss, and surprise, it's a big gigantic heart. Wow, what a major lack of creativity. But he is pretty easy to kill, so just keep blasting away at him, and he'll die pretty quickly. So after destroying the final boss and conquering all eight stages, the island blows up and peace is finally restored. It also turns out that you not only save planet Earth, but the entire universe as well. Wow, the whole freaking universe? Who knew this was such a battle of epic proportions? And to think that the war was won by the military only sending in two guys to try to derail the whole operation. But the taste of victory would be short-lived, because as it turns out, the aliens weren't fully defeated, and they would be planning a second attack. Luke? Luke? <laughs>